tactical to practical. Tactical. Military hybrid vehicles, high tech and high torque for tomorrow's battlefields. It gives them unprecedented amount of mobility. Practical. Civilian hybrid vehicles, less fuel, and now more power. V6 engine with V8 level performance and better fuel economy. Tactical. Concealment and deception create imaginary armies. The key thing is to blend. To such a point, you become invisible. Practical. Concealment and illusion make things appear and disappear. Reveal what you want the audience to see and to not reveal what you don't want them to see. Tactical. Scanning technology. X-ray vision protects national security. It's only going to take one bomb in one container to shut down the entire global trading system. Practical. Scanning technology. Diagnosing injuries in seconds. Time is the most important enemy that you have to cope with. Tactical to practical. Developed for tactical advantage. Declassified for practical use. Hybrid electric technology powers the fighting forces of the future. This vehicle will give the soldiers, you know, significant new capabilities. Practical. Today's hybrid and electric cars can get you there cleaner, cheaper, and much faster. More efficient is better acceleration, no pollution. Today's hybrid electric vehicles combine the technologies of a fuel-burning engine with a battery-powered motor. This is a prototype reconnaissance surveillance and targeting vehicle for the U.S. Marine Corps. It's nicknamed the Shadow. This best of both worlds tactical machine combines the power and range of a diesel with the fuel efficiency and silent stealth of an electric vehicle. This vehicle will give the soldiers significant new capabilities. It gives them uh, just an unprecedented amount of mobility. Off-road, cross-country, and broken terrain, the kinds of terrain we're seeing uh, our forces operate in today. The Shadow has a 140 horsepower turbocharged diesel engine. But there's no transmission or drive shaft to transfer that power to the wheels. Instead, the diesel turns a generator, which charges the batteries and powers four 50 kilowatt electric drive motors mounted in the wheel hubs. When conditions call for maximum torque, no problem. The batteries can kick some extra juice to the in-hub motors, giving the Shadow over 200 horses of pure climbing muscle. Check this out. Since each wheel is powered by its own motor, they can actually turn in opposite directions. If the troops get trapped on a dead-end street, this sure beats the old three-point turn. <laughs> I'm buying one. This diesel-electric military tech demonstrator is called the A-Head. It's a high-tech hybrid that could serve as anything from a troop transport to a high-powered weapons platform. The eight in-wheel electric drive motors give the vehicle incredible maneuverability. These prototype fighting vehicles are definitely cutting edge. But hybrid engine technology has a long tactical history. The hybrid electric power plant has propelled naval submarines since the early days of World War I. February 1915. German U-boats have England in a virtual stranglehold. Waging unrestricted warfare on merchant ships supplying the British Isles. Powered by new hybrid engine technology, the U-boats are a lethal predator. On the surface, the subs rely on diesel power. But when it's time to run silent and deep, a lack of air makes the diesels useless. That's when the ships run on ultra-quiet electric motors. They were a real proven ground for the concept that combining these technologies was better than either one by themselves. The German subs sink more than a thousand merchant ships before the U.S. joins the fight in 1917. 
diesel electric submarines become a standard in naval warfare. And while early hybrid electric engines proved their tactical value on the high seas, today hybrid technology helps civilian cars, like this Toyota Prius, get the most out of a gallon of gas. December 1999. The revolutionary hybrid electric Honda Insight hits the U.S. market, boasting 60 plus miles per gallon and ultra clean tailpipe emissions. The Toyota Prius is soon to follow. Hybrids offer environmentally conscious drivers the advantages of an all electric vehicle without the inconvenience. This vehicle does not have to be plugged in. You just fill it with unleaded gasoline somewhat less often than a regular vehicle. In the Toyota Prius, a small gas engine and an electric motor work together to achieve maximum efficiency. In fuel-wasting stop-and-go driving, the gas engine shuts down and the Prius electric motor runs on pure battery power. The gasoline engine fires up as needed to recharge the battery and to provide extra power for acceleration. When braking, the car's generator helps slow the vehicle and charges the battery in the process. You just get in and go. The technology all occurs fairly seamlessly under the surface of the vehicle, allowing you to get significantly better fuel efficiency. And if you think good gas mileage means giving up performance, well, the next generation hybrids may prove you wrong. V6 engine with V8 level performance and better than four cylinder passenger car fuel economy. But nothing has better fuel efficiency than a vehicle that doesn't burn fuel. This little car is called the T0. And let me tell you, it's pretty fast. In fact, its builders claim that it can beat this 500 horsepower Dodge Viper. Now, that's a pretty bold claim considering what's under the hood. You see, the T0 is an electric vehicle powered by nothing more than laptop computer batteries. That's right, lithium ion laptop batteries, nearly 7,000 of them. But just how fast can a laptop battery-powered car be? It's never been beaten by any street car. It'll do 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. <laughs> All right, time to put this car to the test. Let's see how the T0 stands up to this fossil-fueled muscle car, a 500-horsepower Dodge Viper. This should be interesting. Ready! Set! Go! Tactical hybrid electric vehicles from the earliest submarines to the battlefield four-wheeler of the future. Practical alternate powered vehicles that are faster, cleaner, and more efficient. All right, I'm behind the wheel of this 500 horsepower Dodge Viper. In the lane next to me, the all-electric T0. Can a car powered by nothing more than laptop computer batteries stand up to this V10 muscle car? Let's find out. Ready! Set! Go! Tom, you're quick off the line. I got you on the line. <laughs> <laughs> I was catchy at the end, but this thing is quick. I got to give you that. Thank you. Now, in a longer race, the Viper will outrun the T0. But in the first quarter mile, the low-end torque of a well-engineered electric car is virtually unbeatable. People still think they're golf carts, but between the electric motors and the batteries, they've really come a very long way.
The military believes that better fuel economy makes for a more effective fighting force. And thanks to their super efficient technology, hybrid tactical vehicles can get the most out of a gallon of fuel. In fact, the Shadow burns almost half as much diesel as a non-hybrid Humvee. 2003, U.S. forces storm across the Iraqi desert, bound for Baghdad. The vehicle division burns through as much as 750,000 gallons of diesel a day. Resupplying fuel hundreds of miles inside a war zone is a logistical nightmare. The speed which we were able to move forward to Baghdad was, was in great measure limited by our ability to move fuel forward. It wasn't because of opposition that we were slowed down, it was really because of the logistics tail. Better fuel economy means faster deployment and greater mission flexibility. It extends your range. So instead of being able to go, say, 200 miles on a mission without refueling, you can go 300 to 400 miles on your tankage without having to be resupplied. Now, for covert recon and surveillance missions, keeping a low profile is critical. A noisy engine can be a dead giveaway. But the Shadow's hybrid design allows you to shut down the diesel and go into an ultra-quiet, all-electric stealth mode. It allows you to either fill your mission as a reconnaissance or, or really helps you to reduce the risk of your mission if you're in a strike mission kind of a posture. The Shadow has an all-electric stealth range of over 20 miles, thanks to state-of-the-art lithium-ion batteries. High-density lithium ions have more than twice the storage capacity of conventional batteries. Looking for a rugged off-road hybrid that you can drive? Check out this 2004 diesel-electric Dodge Ram. Not only is this hybrid easy on the gas, it's got 10 kilowatts of electrical power at the ready. You want to power your RV, you want to power some uh, equipment, power tools, etc. You have that power with you wherever the vehicle goes. And it looks like this hybrid Dodge truck is joining the service. It's part of a new Army program to adapt existing civilian vehicles to tactical use. It speeds the deployment of the vehicle to the military. It reduces their acquisition cost, and it reduces their operation costs. A heavy-duty suspension, bigger tires, and a beefed-up electrical system convert this civilian hybrid electric truck into a rugged war machine. And while hybrid electric vehicles are definitely coming of age, engineers are already working on what may be the powertrain of the future. The prototype GM Highwire is powered by a fuel cell. That's a device that uses a chemical reaction to convert hydrogen into electricity. That electricity runs in four hub drive motors and powers the vehicle's drive-by-wire steering and braking systems. The Highwire's only emission is pure water. Not only is it a zero emissions vehicle with much better fuel economy than today's vehicles, but it will also brake in a shorter distance, it will accelerate faster, it'll have better steering feel, better ride and handling, better maneuverability. And the world's first fuel cell powered submarines are joining the German fleet. March 2002, the U-31 is launched in the Baltic Sea. Nine specially built Siemens fuel cells power the sub. The U-31 has an undersea speed of four knots and can remain submerged for several weeks. You can store hydrogen in very dense ways. So you can have a lot of fuel on board, far higher energy density in your storage tanks than for a gasoline or a diesel-powered vehicle. And the submarine of the future may not even need an onboard fuel supply. That's right, by extracting hydrogen from seawater, fuel cell subs could someday be powered by the water that surrounds them. And speaking of the future, this experimental Japanese vehicle will blow you away. From the tactical hybrid shadow, 
to the practical all-electric T0. Alternate power is driving some of today's most innovative vehicles. The Kaz is a Japanese eight-passenger all-electric concept car. All of the vehicle's power and drive systems are packed into a 15-inch chassis. The low center of gravity and four-wheel steering make for impressive handling. Boasting 700 pounds of lithium-ion batteries, the Kaz has been clocked at 190 miles per hour. and can go 200 miles on a one-hour charge. Hybrid and electric vehicles. A potent mix of speed, efficiency, and versatility that could give the soldier of tomorrow the range, mobility, and power to track down the enemy. Tactical. Concealment and deception. Saves lives and catches the enemy by surprise. The key thing is to blend. Practical concealment and deception inspire scientists and creates illusions and magic on stage. To reveal what you want the audience to see and to not reveal what you don't want them to see. The art of war is deception. The enemy knows you're out there. What he doesn't know is where you are. Deception is key. In World War II, the U.S. escalates wartime deception to a grand theatrical scale. The Department of Defense employs the talents of artists, designers, electronics wizards, and actors, including one of Hollywood's biggest names. Swashbuckling actor Douglas Fairbanks, a commissioned lieutenant in the Navy, observes British wartime deception and pushes for the creation of a special U.S. unit devoted to camouflage and deception. The top secret 23rd Special Troops is the result of his efforts. They were told, your job is not to be a target on the battlefield. Hide things. Well, then they got to uh, Camp Forest, Tennessee, where their real mission became apparent. Then the mission became... Um, guess what, you're not going to hide things. In fact, you're going to create fake objects on the battlefield. You're going to create an entire show and you're going to reveal it to the Germans rather than hide it. And so it became this kind of camouflaging the camouflage, something quite postmodern about it. Fairbanks is joined in the 23rd by others who would make a name for themselves in the world of art, like designer Bill Blass and painter Ellsworth Kelly. They developed camouflage techniques, making fake rocks, invisible foxholes, and dummy tanks. And they perfect the art of sonic deception, recording the sounds of tanks and troop movements to play back for the enemy, to give the impression of greater strength, or to drive the enemy to a different location. October 1942. While the 23rd is training in the U.S., the British pull off the classic magician's trick, misdirection. General Montgomery creates a fake army and draws the Germans to the south. Meanwhile, he moves his real troops to the north by night. El Alamein is, is considered to be the textbook example of, of deception on the battlefield, and it's what the special troops built their doctrine on. Pretend to do it over here, but you do it over there. The 23rd arrives in Europe shortly after D-Day and quickly goes to work. As the Allies push the Germans to the east, the 23rd executes wartime deception with a theatrical flair. In a classic operation, the 9th Army is ready to cross the Rhine, but the Germans are dug in on the other side. Call in the 23rd. They started with the radios making it sound as though different troops were moving around. In this case, the 79th Division and the 30th Division. Then they brought in uh, the, the neoprene dummies, artillery, big tanks, and, and set all those up so they could be seen. And then, of course, they started broadcasting sonic deception so that by the time the sun came up, people had been hearing these tanks moving around all night. The Germans think the 9th Army will cross at Dusseldorf, so they amass troops there. In fact, the 9th Army went across at Vessel, about 30 miles away, suffered 31 casualties, walked across the river. It was an amazing show of what deception could do. I mean, they were very much uh, doing it as though they were staging a production. And they were playing, of course, to a very deadly audience. 
Modern theater designers use puppetry, lights, sound, and scenery to create their theatrical deceptions. At Disney's The Lion King, those tactics are employed on a grand scale. The job of the theater designer is to bring a willing audience along in the deception. A principal task is to direct the audience's eye to where you want it to go. Good camouflage drives the viewer's perception with visual cues. The coloration and movement of animals inspire the creators of The Lion King. Actors are camouflaged into the costumes, but not hidden. Because of the way they blend in and the specialized movement, the audience sees a rhino, a giraffe, or a leopard. I would maybe compare it to a magician who, who shows you how he's going to do the trick and then does the trick. It works because the viewer wants it to work. We are, are um, demanding the audience to take that leap, and they willingly do. On the stage, concealment and deception are for dramatic effect. In the military, it's a matter of life and death. Camouflage has provided a tactical advantage since man first picked up a weapon. And although concealment and deception may not pack a lethal punch, it's just as important to winning the battle and keeping these guys alive. In the Civil War, Confederate soldiers create what look like Quaker guns by mounting logs on carts to simulate artillery. But modern camouflage in battle makes its entrance through art. In 1909, American artist Abbott Henderson Thayer is credited with inventing the theory behind modern camouflage by describing how creatures blend into their surroundings or disrupt their form to confuse their prey. Thayer takes his theory to the U.S. military, but they pass on it. The French take up his ideas and in 1915 create the Camouflage Corps, made up of artists and craftsmen. They employ 8,000 women to sew camouflage netting. In another World War I innovation, blending in is not the point. Dazzle painting was a remarkable and, and rather audacious idea. It was very bold geometric slashing shapes, often in bright colors, bright blues, oranges, yellows, purples. And this was done on ships, and it was done on tanks. And the idea was you would break up the form. It would be so weird that the eye wouldn't be able to recognize what it actually was. And in the case of a ship, you wouldn't be able to tell where the water line ended, where the superstructure began, or even which direction the ship was steaming. The tactic continues into World War II. British and U.S. Navy brass are skeptical, but superstitious sailors insist the bizarre designs work. In fact, only 1% of ships with dazzle painting are sunk. Breaking up form can also help you blend in. Ghillie suits are extreme camo. For Army snipers, they are essential equipment. Wearing a ghillie suit can be hot and uncomfortable, but a little discomfort's okay when the alternative is being detected. Each suit's handmade by the sniper himself by sewing strips of burlap or other materials onto a pair of coveralls or BDUs. In tall grass like this, a sniper can remain undetected for hours. The ghillie makes its military debut in World War I. Today's ghillie suit is a personal statement. It's a soldier's first line of defense. Your movements are very slow and deliberate. It could take you several hours just to go 100 yards. Ghillie suits are also essential equipment for the serious hunter. Commercial camouflage manufacturers use the principles of military camouflage to give an advantage to the hunter. Blue water spear fishermen try to blend in under the sea to snare their prey. But what kind of camouflage can protect you in the dark? Even in the darkest night, reflection off fabrics can be detected with night vision goggles. Scientists at the Army's Camouflage Evaluation Facility in Natick, Massachusetts are researching ways to protect the night warfighter. We're looking for shape disruption. We're looking for blending. Uh, light has a big factor. We don't want to see any glint or anything reflecting off the uniform. Scientists measure the reflectance of fabrics and backgrounds to find the ideal colors and patterns for today's stealth uniform. 
then the reflectance coming off the uniform and the reflectance coming off the, the terrain elements should be somewhat similar. There should be little contrast between them. Uh, it makes it very difficult to pick out the soldier. The camouflage evaluation facility looks at four distinct environments, woodland, desert, arctic, and urban. Fabrics and uniforms are tested in each environment under four different night settings. Natick scientists look to nature to determine the best colors and shapes. In fact, with the digital inkjet printing system, they can take a photograph, manipulate it in the computer, and produce a fabric, then test it and see how well it does. The uniform won't make you invisible, but it can give you the edge. Camp flash could save your life, or you'd never know it. One of Natick's greatest challenges is how to defeat detection through thermal imaging. Research continues on this, but it's classified. The goal of military camouflage is to blend in, not to disappear. But what if you could become transparent? Concealment and deception give the warfighter a winning edge. Art and misdirection create images from fabric and light. And if you really want to disappear, you might not have to wait that long. Scientists at the University of Tokyo are using optical camouflage technology to make things vanish. The technique employs a camera behind a subject and a projection from the front onto a special material to give the illusion of transparency. This new special reflective material may someday allow surgeons to see through their own hands or pilots to see through the bottom of their planes. Tactical, concealment and deception from the artist's palette to the battlefield keeps our soldiers safe and the enemy off balance. Practical, concepts of camouflage turn up on stage and in the science of the future. Tactical, scanning, identifies threats to homeland security. Scanning provides a unique eye and helps keep the U.S. public safe. Practical. Scanning brings big screen stars down to size. 3D scanning has allowed us to take anything from the real world and bring it into the digital world. Scanning technology is now playing an important role in homeland security. And U.S. Customs officials are the first and last line of defense in our nation's ports. What the public needs to realize is it's only going to take one bomb in one container, in one port, in one area of the world to shut down the entire global trading system. What's important is that we detect that threat or the existence of that threat as quickly as possible. I'm at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, which combined are the nation's busiest. Nearly half of the 8 million containers that enter the U.S. each year come through here. Security experts say that one of the most likely ways for terrorists to smuggle in nuclear materials and biological weapons is in containers like these. The challenge is detecting that threat without bringing the port and the economy to a halt. This U.S. Customs truck is one answer. But it's no ordinary truck, and it packs a powerful left hook. It's a gamma ray scanner on wheels. At the port, containers are known as cans. So today, I'm riding with U.S. Customs in the truck that scans the cans. High-tech scanning replaces most of the time-consuming process of opening and unloading suspicious containers. Obviously, we're just driving alongside of these containers. Right. How do you see inside of it? We have a gamma ray that will shoot through the container, and the computer and will the, interpret that. And that's the big arm on the that's side. The big, that's the big detector. Okay, so that's can... shooting gamma rays through the container. It's like a big x-ray machine. Exactly, exactly. An x-ray machine that can see through a 40-foot long wall of steel. Right There's here. a car in there. Right, exactly. We have, we have an automobile here. <laughs> that is wild. 
We're looking for any kind of uh, just dense anomaly, anything that just doesn't seem to fit right with the rest of the puzzle. You know, the one piece that doesn't fit in. Customs officers know in advance what is supposed to be in each container because exporters are required to file a manifest listing the contents. This is a shipment of uh, consolidated goods from uh, Belgium, and this is what concerns me right here. The scanner has trouble differentiating between dense objects. And we'll mark this one for tailgate. At the port, a tailgate isn't a big party, although you can expect to pop open a can or two. What we're concerned about here is, is the little cylindrical objects here, okay. and then this dense object right here. So he's going to climb in there, he's going to try to verify what the commodity is and see exactly what okay. it is. It, the reason why we do tailgates is to see what it is. It, um, nothing's being plain sight. It'll all be boxed up or, or, or packaged. So we'll go ahead and cut the box open and see what it is. And then you just put it inspected by U.S. Customs. Exactly. We'll put yeah. the tape, green tape on there and you'll seal it back up. This container is okay to continue its journey. From the seaports to the airports, various scanning technologies play a vital role in many aspects of our lives like scanning a document or photo, getting through the line faster at the supermarket, and sending a package overnight. X-ray technology has advanced greatly since the discovery of X-rays by German Wilhelm Rentgen in 1895. His wife Bertha gives her husband a hand in the discovery. She puts her hand on a photographic plate for 15 minutes while X-rays pass through. At the time, Renkin has no idea how x-rays would be used to improve our lives. Every second counts for trauma victims. Getting from the scene of an accident to the emergency room quickly is critical. And the swift power of scanners is now saving lives. A minute or two can be everything. The medical staff at Baltimore's Shock Trauma Center needs to know the full extent of a patient's injuries in a heartbeat. When you're dealing with trauma, in general, time is, is the most important enemy that you have to, have to cope with. You don't have a lot of it. The work of trauma units calls for scanners that are lightning fast, like the STAT scan. Conventional full-body x-rays can take 30 minutes or more, but the STAT scan gives doctors a head-to-toe x-ray in just 13 seconds flat and with less radiation because the STAT scan shoots an x-ray beam through slots only two millimeters wide. So we can immediately look and say, okay, there's, there's a fracture, there's a fracture. This patient also has a collapsed lung or has hemorrhage in the chest. And in the case of this patient, the STAT scan clearly reveals something life-threatening. And here you can see the bullet sitting over the pelvis uh, with, some bone, with some bullet fragments. This allows us to take one x-ray and follow the bullet course without having to resort to having multiple different views. Another huge medical scanning technology is the CAT scan. CAT stands for Computed Axial Tomography and combines an x-ray machine with a computer to create an image on a computer screen. The high-resolution digital imaging that lets CAT scanners look deep inside human bodies was first used to look deep into outer space at heavenly bodies, in particular the moon. During the Apollo space program, scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory developed digital image processing that allows them to visually enhance photos of the moon taken from different observation points. Zero, three, zero. Today, that technology is used in CAT scanners in hospitals and at airports to keep bombs off planes. These cross-sectional images that we take, which are based on the density of the materials inside the bag, is exactly the same as a medical scanner. The main difference is the software behind it. That software can avert disaster in the air. It can look inside a suitcase and find a thin bomb stuck between some magazines or plastic explosives hidden inside a radio. You can see that this layer down here, especially this one here in the middle, are the explosive itself. And these baggage scanners can screen hundreds of bags an hour. In the center of the imaging section, we have a gantry that's spinning around the bag. On one side of the gantry is an x-ray source, and on the other side of the gantry is an array of detectors. And these spin around the bag continuously at 120 revolutions per minute. And every time they complete a turn, they basically create a virtual slice of the bag.
In comic books and movies, it was exposure to gamma rays that created the Hulk. In real life, scanning helps turn stars of the big screen into something that fits into your hand. Have you ever wondered how action figures become so lifelike? The answer is 3D digital scanning. One of the leaders in this field is Gentle Giant Studios, which created all the figures you see right here. Today, they're going to create the world's first Hunter Ellis action figure. But to make sure it looks exactly like me, I need to step into their scanner. Gentle Giant uses a 3D body scanner made by Cyberware. The scanner uses a plane of uh, laser light to uh, illuminate the subject. And we uh, read that resulting contour with a series of mirrors and a uh, CCD camera to extract range measurements. And then we sweep this along the surface of the subject uh, to capture the whole body. In other words, the laser functions as a high-tech tape measure to recreate an exact 3D image in the computer. A quick 17-second scan, and now I'm in the computer. So here's your head scan data. That is incredible. I mean, the detail that you can see is absolutely amazing. OK, so now where do we go? Well, we're going to go to our rapid prototyping room and print out a head. Let's take a look at your head. <laughs> All right. So 3D scanning, I can understand. But 3D printing? The way this works is it sprays layers of a wax and resin mix, one on top of the other, and recreates the geometry that we send to it. But to become an action figure, the 3D scan model goes through several steps, like molding. Now, is that me? Yep, this is you right here. Part of me, anyhow, right? Yeah. And it's my head. <laughs> then to sculpting. Now, do I pose any particular challenges here? Uh, no, actually, your, your scan was pretty good. Face is all right, so. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> Feel free to fix anything there. <laughs> and then to painting. OK, now that Javier's putting the color back in my head, where do we go from here? Well, after he's done, we're ready to see the final product. Really? Yeah. The, the unveiling. Well, this is the grand unveiling, huh? This is it, man. You ready? Yeah. Whoa, oh, my god. That is insane. The technology of scanning gives security personnel a quick way to see inside cargo and allows doctors to see inside patients without making them go under the knife. In the world of action figures, the goal is to make them as lifelike as possible. Thanks to scanning, they are. I'm at Gentle Giant Studios, and I can hardly wait to see the Hunter Ellis action figure based on my 3D scan. Well, this is the grand unveiling, huh? This is it, man. You ready? Yeah. Whoa, oh, my god. No way. The detail is amazing. I'm holding a spinning image of myself from my flying days, right down to the stinger patch. This action figure even comes with my own accessories. And on this one, you can just have him carrying it along with the, the helmet bag. But don't expect to find these on the shelves of your local toy store anytime soon. If he could talk, I'd be afraid for my job. <laughs> And for real-life action heroes like the Marines, 3D scanning is speeding up the process of suiting up the force without tape measures. To a Marine, a uniform is more than just clothing. It's part of personal defense. So it's crucial for the Marines to have uniforms that fit well. The scanning of the recruits here at the depot helps improve the quality of the uniforms that were being issued on the sizes. And in turn, it will speed up the process. This is one of the 15,000 recruits who get scanned each year at the Marine Corps Recruiting Depot in San Diego. After the scan, the computer takes the measurement data and determines the correct size of each part of the uniform. The whole process takes 30 seconds. On a sheet of paper, you're going to have his trousers, his shirt, it'll have his coat. Now they know exactly what size uniforms to ask for. What size camis? Medium regular. Marines are known for looking sharp. And the better that uniform fits on them, the more pride and the more confidence that they're going to have when they go out and they leave here. The Department of Defense has long been interested in how the size and shape of the human body impacts performance. The Air Force Research Lab uses 3D scanners to help design better fitting helmets, oxygen masks, even cockpits.
But in the hands of the wrong people, scanners are one of the newest tools being used in one of history's oldest crimes, counterfeiting. What we're seeing in the United States, especially right now, is uh, uh, overwhelmingly most of our counterfeit currency is coming from uh, uh, desktop publishing. Uh, in, in other words, uh, off of your home computers, off of scanners. Technology has come a long way since the Secret Service was started by President Lincoln in 1865. Their original mission? To put counterfeiters out of business at a time when one out of every three bills in circulation is a fake. Today, phony currency accounts for only a tiny fraction of all the U.S. dollars in public hands. But counterfeiters are still keeping the Secret Service on their toes. What we've seen historically is that as technology gets better, increases, um, so does counterfeiting uh, techniques. That means the U.S. Bureau of Printing and Engraving has to keep redesigning the currency. In 2003, Andrew Jackson and the $20 bill get a colorful makeover. The scanners are only able to detect uh, things that are on the surface. It uses what we call reflected light. When you, when you press uh, the button on the photocopier or scanner, you see that bright light scanning underneath. It can't see through the paper. You're not able to reproduce uh, a genuine watermark in that fashion. And the same thing with the security thread. Fluoresces, uh, pretty brilliant green. And here's the counterfeit. There's no fluorescence, no green fluorescence. It's, it's to defeat scanning type of technologies. Like at national borders, thanks to backscatter x-rays, inspectors in Mexico find a surprise in a truck full of bananas. 37 would-be immigrants hidden behind false panels. Backscatter technology is designed to capture the portion of an x-ray beam that is normally scattered and lost during operation. That gives the images a photo light clarity and organic materials such as plastic explosives and drugs stand out as bright objects. It can be used to drive by a row of vehicles or cars, trucks, and look basically inside them to see if there's any materials such as explosive or drugs that are embedded inside wheel wells, inside of door panels, inside of the roof and so forth. And depending on how you see things, the backscatter x-ray has another revealing use. It can see what's beneath your clothes, guns, explosives, and a lot more that doesn't leave much to the imagination. Pretty soon, there are going to be scanners that can watch people entering a public area and portray images of them unclothed. You can see anything they're concealing. These will enhance our security. It's going to do a number on privacy and certain types of people will be applying for jobs. Scanning, a high-tech weapon that helps keep our ports and our country safe. And makes superhero action figures out of mere mortals. There you go, tactical to practical. Tactical, hybrid vehicles, range, power, and stealth for the soldier of tomorrow. Practical, hybrid vehicles get you there cheaper, cleaner, and now faster. Tactical, concealment and deception, hiding our troops and deceiving the enemy. Practical, concealment and deception, creating worlds of imagination and illusion. Tactical, scanning technology, a high-tech tool for homeland security. Practical, scanning, saving lives in trauma wards. Tactical to practical, technology moving from government deployment to everyone's enjoyment.